Uh, now, over uh, over to Tom. Oh, he's there. I'm here. You're here. You're correct. Yeah, okay. So, okay. I think there's going to be a few themes coming out today. Yes, By the way, yeah, yeah, just, uh, yeah. just uh, uh, preempting some of my slides there. Uh, but thanks for the invite. And apologies, Dave Julian couldn't make it today. Unfortunately, he's not very well. But uh, he has a very interesting story to tell, too. So we might need to try and capture that some other time. Um, but I wanted to tell you a quick story today about uh, our work in South Tyneside since 2013-14 to try and integrate this. Um, so uh, some of you might recognise this. This is the King's Fund animation on the health and social care system. It's very informative, um, if slightly tongue-in-cheek depiction of how the health and social care system currently operates uh, in England. Now, um, South Tyneside is a small borough, it's uh, 150,000 people, it's 64 square miles, um, it's one council, it's one clinical commissioning group, and it's one NHS Foundation Trust. So you figure, if anywhere can unpick this and make this work, it's a place where it's small and coterminous. Uh, and of course you'd be wrong, um, <laughs> it's anything but simple to do that. Uh, now, so back in 2013, uh, the government's wheeze to try and find the holy grail of health and social care integration uh, was, was launched. It was the Best Care Fund policy. And um, I think um, my observation at the time was um, health and social care integration, and my observation still is that health and social care integration uh, is a means to an end, not an end in itself. And I think... Unfortunately, at the time, and maybe this was just the way that areas were approaching it, um, it was it, it 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 simply implied that by putting things together, you you can make things better. And I think what that did was it ignored decades of culture, politics, uh, funding, uh, and missed the central point. Going back to the previous presentation, that it's all about the person. Actually, there is a person at the centre of all of this, and actually, that should be the central goal. Um, and it also missed, I, I believe, it missed the central point that people have to own the change. Um, and I think uh, in some areas that I worked in around that time, it, it became a bit of a paper exercise. It was nothing more than actually a, a, a pooled fund that wasn't really a pooled fund. It was just, I'm going to put my tenor in and I'm going to get my tenor back out if that's all right by you. And everyone agreed that that was okay. And everyone carried on working like that. Um, I think in South Tanta, what we started to realise, though, is that uh, we are all in it together. Um, there was only finite resource. Any kind of um, sitting back and thinking, it's okay, it's not me that's under pressure, was, was a false assurance, because actually the hole's in the boat and we're all going down. Okay? Um, and I think we've seen that, and I still see it today, hear about it today, so if, if say, a, a clinical commission group is trying to squeeze down their spend on continuing health care, that may only put pressure on adult social care and vice versa. It is only one pound. And the other thing we realised is that simple solutions were simply creating tomorrow's problems. Okay, we were putting things in place and not thinking about the consequences because there are no, thing, no such things as simple answers really, are there? So um, around that time, uh, South Tyneside applied to be a health and social care pioneer. There was, we were one of 14 in the country. Um, and as, uh, actually, the, the, the aim around that pioneer program was to develop support in self care. It was a very, uh, very um, ambitious aim and one that we're still working through today, and I think a very positive one. But as part of that, it led to, uh, as part of the pioneer program, they paired you with systems around the world. And we were paired with the Canterbury District Health Board. Uh, and they came over to tell us their story several times, uh, and we really started to de develop a, a relationship with them. And actually, we really liked their story. Their story was one of uh, a whole system approach. That's Canterbury, New Zealand. Right? Yes, sorry, this, Canterbury, this is Canterbury, New Zealand. Okay. Sorry, I should have made that really clear. Um, it was one of a whole system approach, one where they win together, they lose together. The structures support doing the right thing, and that there was empowerment to the front line to be able to do the right thing. They took the money off the table, or so they claimed, uh, and their aim was to join up primary and secondary care. And fundamentally, there was no changes around organisational governance. So there was no change to the means as such. It was a change in trying to get towards the ends. Um, and we liked it. We liked their uh, alliancing approach, and we wanted some of that. Because at the centre of it all, uh, it were culture and permissions. 
So we, we rapidly dismantled our bureaucracy uh, that was our then integration board. Uh, it was really serving as a place where we kind of sat across the table and did our transactional work, um, staring at a spreadsheet that never really got kind of updated. Um, and we established a leadership team called our Alliance Leadership Team. Um, we we um, invited some key players across the system. Uh, I don't just mean people you might expect, like the executives, chief executives, um, clinical directors. Um, we, we involved frontline professionals. We also involved people from the third sector. We, we genuinely had it as a leadership team. Um, and the emphasis was really on about how we want to work together, not the action of doing the work that we were, we were hoping to do. It was all about our principles. It was all about how we wanted to work together. Um, we have very different meetings. We still have very different meetings. There, are, there is no set agenda. We sit in a, in, a, in a clear space. We sit in an open space. We don't sit around a table. And we sit and we talk about what matters to the person and how we're going to work better together to achieve that. Um, we developed a set of aligning principles, and obviously you're not going to be able to read all of those necessarily, but you'll be able to look at them at your own leisure on the slides. And um, the key elements of that were that we win together, we lose together. We've got some shared ambitions, and we want to make sure that we're working together on those. That there is only one resource. We talk about the South Tyneside Pound. Um, the South Tyneside Pound, although it's diminishing, is still a significant figure. We're talking, we're talking a three hundred million pound plus health and care system in South Tyneside. Actually, there's a lot of scope to do things differently with that. Um, some of the principles were that we recognize that it's not easy, and actually we need to be able to hold on to the fact that it's not easy and help each other through that, recognizing that uh, by trying to put bureaucracy in place or measurement in place or, um, or dare I say, it, things like terms of reference and some of the more formal documents that we're used to, they are false assurances. They're not actually things that help us do our job any better. And um, we, we realize that if we, we need to start asking um, about how we can do something rather than if we can do something. So it very much has to be about giving more permission on how we can get things achieved rather than saying, is this possible? Can we do this? Actually, don't ask that question. Let's ask how we're going to do it. So. In terms of uh, our reflections and learning, um, the main remit of the LT has been around learning. We have had professional support within that space. We've had, we've had a coach who's worked with us around the Alliance Leadership Table, and that has been absolutely invaluable. Um, we've recognized that our trust levels have gone up significantly, particularly at the uh, decision-making level. We're much more trust trusting of each other's actions across the system. Um, and so those relationships have improved immeasurably. People have really started to understand complexity. We've started to understand that there is no kind of linear process that we're working on here. It is a complex system. And actually, not having the answers, although it feels like maybe that's your role and that's what we should be doing, actually that's, a, that's, that's false to believe that you're there to do that. Actually, what, you're, what you need to be doing is creating the right conditions for the system to be able to flourish. Um, we have been able to progress our, our pooling of funding <coughs> further. We've also got a, I, I, I keep getting told, the biggest integrated commissioning team in the country now. So we've started to put our commissioning teams together and they're working very differently. We've made some really good successes, particularly through things like our learning disabilities transformation work. It's one of our core examples of how we're doing things differently. We've pulled the funding, we're working on an alliance contract. The alliance that leads that integration um, has three people with learning disabilities who are paid to be part of that system and that are there to steer the work, interact, um, co-produce all of that with members of the learning disabilities community and beyond. I think it's a really shining example of where we're getting things right. However, um, there are some things that we recognize we still need to get better. There are some, it, it takes quite a lot of energy, it takes a lot of energy and, and, and a lot of that is placed on a number of key individuals and we haven't quite worked out how to disperse that more yet. Um, we haven't fully worked out to it, how to enact the yes yet. I think we, we set the principles, we set the direction but then sometimes we still get snarled up in the, oh you can't do that because of 
X piece of legislation or this procurement rule or whatever it needs to be. And I think we need to find a way of creating more permissive systems and understanding how we can go ahead and get things done. And in particular, that means how we're able to shift the money upstream further as well, shift it more to prevention. It's a principle that we hold on to, but we still struggle with being able to, to fully follow our feet on that principle. Um, and there are still some, some ugly elements to it, although relationships have improved immeasurably. There's still, they, there's, we still grapple sometimes with the concept of control. And we feel that the people that are still trying to hold on to control uh, as part of the system, we need to work out a way of being able to disperse that and free that up. Um, we haven't got our relationship with the citizen right yet. I think I'm pointing towards the learning disability example of, of where we are getting it right or starting to get it right. We haven't done that for the full population yet, and we want to learn from others about how you might be able to work better with communities and their representatives of those communities. Um, and I think there's a there is a uh, a threat on the horizon insofar as the changes around NHS commissioning and providing at the moment. I think some of that s sits there as being something that could could shape the future direction of this, and we need to understand how the ALT will continue to work in that space. Um, and we need to keep learning and recognising what we look like when we're at our best, and that is a central part of our learning when we come back together. So. Um, just to wrap up then, I suppose one of the things I was trying to think about was, was in all of this complexity, is there kind of an underlying simplicity? And I think one of the things we recognise is some of that underlying simplicity is that it, it is about relationships, and relationships have been absolutely crucial to this. Where, again, we haven't always got those relationships right, but where we've seen the, the successes and where we've seen the real green shoots of alliancing, it's where we've actually really expanded on those relationships. Uh, and made those relationships.